Okay. Also, Sue, just uh, as a side FYI, I think the, the recording on this hiccuped a little bit. So I think the first, up until now, didn't record completely. I'll touch base with you afterwards, but I think it okay. missed the, the opening bit for the meeting. That should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Just, just giving you an FYI. I'll put something okay. up as a disclaimer for anybody that wants to see it on the YouTube channel, but I just noticed that it was, it was blinking at me in a way that it shouldn't be blinking at me. Okay. Um, so uh, amongst the board, I, I'm okay with granting the, the waiver. I'll make the motion to grant the waiver for Greg Kreitz around his uh, driveway. I could. Yeah, I'm glad to hear from Jim on this uh, issue. So that makes me feel a lot more comfortable with uh, approving it. Agreed. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next order of business is the hidden driveway sign at 3993 Smaltz Road. Uh, Attorney George drew up an ordinance which needs to be signed. Uh, the enactment notice was posted on the outside bulletin board on July 21st, and it was also advertised in the Reading Eagle on July 22nd. Uh, this would place a, a warning sign around 300 feet away from where the, the hidden driveway is, uh, immediately following a, a turn that you have poor visibility against. Um, I'll make the motion to sign that, uh, that particular ordinance into, into being. Second. Is that your motion? Yeah, we don't have an ordinance number for that, right? Uh, not yet, but you okay. can, I don't think I put it on, did I? Uh, no, it's, on. it's okay. Do, do I need to be that specific for you, Sue, though? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. figure that out. Yeah. It's the next okay. line. Yeah, it's the, I'll make a motion to, sign the hidden driveway ordinance or hidden driveway sign ordinance um second okay roll call peter hi irene irene hi jim hi Okay. Next order of business is the treasurer's report. I'll turn it over to Irene. Yes, uh, Peter and I uh, were working in the office last night and uh, actually Rick helped us create a little bit of a different format for um, our bills. So with being more transparent, um, if we could actually dedicate in the future a little section to the mean just for treasurer's report, of course, making everything available to the public, but this way kind of give a short synopsis over our current status reflecting the bank accounts, things like that. So we're working on something that um, is a little bit easier to read and so that everyone can understand it a bit better, but also making sure that we have all the data in there that we need to report to the public. So the takeaway from that is we're likely going to have a potential change in format ready for next month's meeting to discuss, review, and possibly approve. And I'm hoping to get uh, Dan. I think we lost Irene there for a second. A um, bit of a part in the meetings as well. Okay. Yeah, we lost you there for a bit, but I think oh. you basically were saying that you're hoping to get Dan, who's also on the, the meeting in attendance, uh, engaged in a lot of that since he's going to be working as a, as a treasurer as well. Correct. Okay. okay. I don't have anything further. Do you have anything further on the treasurer's no. report aspect, Irene or Good. Jim? Thank you. No. Okay. Uh, the next item, I'll turn back over to Irene, is around QuickBooks. Yeah, um, Rick has been wonderful and instrumental in catching us all up. And um, part of that is helping us out greatly with our um, audits. And so just uh, we're, we're caught up and it feels good to be up on par with all of the accounts currently. Yeah, one of the other principal things that he's helping us do is we're doing work that had been done previously more efficiently. Uh, specifically around how we log the, the township payroll. Uh, there was a lot of duplicated effort in the way that it had been done previously, and we've gotten it to a, a much more simplified, streamlined, a uh, lot easier to understand uh, as well sort of format in QuickBooks. Working smarter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Work smarter, not harder. 
Okay, next item on the agenda is the Earl Lehman Poultry Operation Letter of Credit. This was auto increased on July 24th, 2020 from $81,933.70 to $90,127.07. Uh, based on recent site inspections, uh, McCarthy Engineering has actually recommended a release in full of that letter of credit. That's correct. They've completed everything out there now that we had bonded and everything's been inspected and signed off. Okay. In that case, I would make the motion to release in full the letter of credit per McCarthy Engineering's recommendation. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the website. Uh, I've been working with the team at Civic CMS. Uh, we're in kind of a holding pattern right now. They have various jobs queued and we're just waiting in line for the next stage of development. Uh, as things develop, I'll be sure to keep you guys in the loop uh, via email, uh, but we're just kind of in a, a waiting state right now until we get to the next next hurdle. Uh, while we wait, though, I have been doing other technology-related things, working on the Google Drive, making sure that more of the stuff is available to the public, uh, setting up the distribution list that I was testing this past week so that we have something that when, when emailed, it goes to all three supervisors from one address. Uh, little, just generally technical quality of life improvements. To, to make our lives easier as well as making it easier for people to, to get in contact with us. Um, so I'll continue to keep you guys up to date on that as well. Um, I'll use this agenda item to, to touch on some of the other technology stuff as well. I got the parts that we had talked about in from Saturday's workshop meeting. Uh, one computer is just about done. Um, it actually has a different processor in it and it is a very much cut rate bottom of the barrel processor in. So I'm, I'm going to try and find a better one um, before I bring it back into the office, but uh, it's been switched over to the, the new main storage device. Uh, Windows 10 is installed. Uh, we actually, weirdly enough, didn't have a Microsoft Office license on the machine, so I'll have to see if I can get one of those uh, relatively cheap, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But it's, uh, it's a lot better than it was when I first turned it on. So there's improvement, but I think it can be a little better before I bring it back in. Um, on that same sort of technical standpoint, the next item on the agenda is the Comcast service that we have at the building. Our current plan is actually uh, expiring or has expired. And to continue with that plan was outlandishly expensive because it's a, a plan that they don't offer anymore. Uh, would have gone from $193 to like $200. 38 or something like that a month. It was a considerable jump. Um, in the course of dealing with the Comcast reps, uh, I came to the change that if we went to a slightly different plan, same number of phone lines, same internet, um, but much faster internet, we'd actually be spending only like $19 or 19 cents more per month to, to switch to that rather than staying on our current, which would, would have been a jump of around like $60. Um, so we talked about it on, on Saturday at the workshop meeting and giving me the authorization to move forward on that. So I'm, I'm getting all the documents signed. Uh, a lot of them still reference Peter Wallace. So I'm getting them to change that around and getting that in so that we have the, the change in service for the township building. Any questions, Irene or Jim? No, thank you. Thank you for all your yeah. technology input. <laughs> Happy to help. Happy to help. It's, uh, it's, it's something I'm good at. So it's, uh, it's, it's easy enough for me to do. Um, Okay, next item on the agenda is the road project 2020. Uh, we received a quote from Reber and Zerbe for overlaying the bad spots. Uh, I wanna get at least two more quotes simply because of the, the financial figures around this. Um, I had reached out to Franklin about getting two more. Uh, I have not heard back yet, so I'll have to touch base with him. And if I, I can't get anything substantial there, I'll, I'll try making some calls. Um, the next portion of that that I, I was going to go down is uh, Jim, and keep me spot on, uh, Jim McCarthy for specifics. We're getting pretty late in the year. We have a, a kind of a rapidly closing timeline to which we could get people to do, actually even do road work. Right. So if we can get a, a reasonable figure of what the work is and really kind of the dollar figure that we're expecting for this, I'm actually thinking we should add that into the bid packet that we're going to put out on PenBid as okay. part, of the, part of the work. Um, I think that's going to do us uh, 
kind of two favors in the sense that um, we probably won't get a lot of hits this year. Um, just a number of things, COVID being one of them, really kind of prevented us from getting it out early enough in the year. And uh, we're, I think we're behind the eight ball there. Beyond that, if we have everything lumped together, we might actually be able to get it for less money simply because it's going to be lumped in with a whole bunch of other work. We'd say simply by an economy of scale. Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll work on trying to get at least uh, one or preferably two other written quotes. Uh, I think the, the cost figure is high enough that we're, we're going to be skirting the, the bidding threshold anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we'll need to get three quotes still. Yeah. yeah. So right. I'll, I'll have them in hand and then we'll, we'll get that, I think, added into that, that bid packet so that we can get that out like beginning of the year. Look at these, yeah. everything else is ready to go early January, February sort of deal. So that's when you're going to, that's when you get your best prices, putting the paving bids out early. Yeah. And uh, if, if we're using liquid fuels, now the governor's extended it the last few years, but it's typically October 31st is the late, last day you can put wearing course down. Okay. <coughs> yeah, last, we're, we're, we're pretty close to that. Yeah, I mean, if we, yeah, we're getting pretty close to that, to that now because the other thing is everyone's got to remember is like, none of the paving got done before middle of May because all the contractors that had the contracts, so they're trying, a lot of them, their, their schedules are pretty filled up for the paving season because they didn't get to start, they had to start everything three months late. Yeah, the way I see it, if we have this pretty much, the, the packets in hand with the exception of that overlay work that needs to be done, if we get that snapped in, we can get that out early in the year and then focus sure. on what we were going to do anyway for 2021, try and get that right. together and get that out in like March or April. Right. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, fantastic. I look forward to working with you on that. Great. Okay, uh, Jim or Irene, any questions? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the road crew safety gear. I'll actually, I'll turn it back over to Irene since uh, this was a, a spot and uh, call out from John, who is the yeah. EMC. So. Yeah, um, with, with the road buckle that occurred, uh, was it last week or the week before? I don't even recall. John noticed that none of our guys had any safety vests. Now, Peter, you said there's probably something in the garage, yeah. but um, we need to, uh, every, safety comes first. So um, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll go down and take a look. Maybe I'll, I'll see if Butch is around, see, because he probably knows his way around. We'll see what we have first and reassess needs, but everyone needs to be clearly labeled. I guess on, on that note, um, as far as the supervisors go, do you guys uh, prefer to have a vest that says township supervisor? I would actually just prefer to go Marion Township. Marion Township. I, would, I wouldn't even go road crew or anything like that. Just list just very Township. general purpose Marion Township. If we okay. want to get a little badge or something like that for yeah. road crew, like honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have an ID badge for road crew or for the SEO mm -hmm. or anybody like that. That's something we can, we can yeah. do and just clip on. That's fine. But for the vests or jackets or yeah, hats or anything. John and I, yeah. yeah. If John and I are going to go to answer rapid response, ID. To your point, though, I, I have seen protective equipment. I don't, for, for the record, I don't think we have enough of it if we had to mobilize the entire road crew all at once. Right, right. If, if, if we can even easily find it. So, right. Can I interject? Absolutely, Sue. So. Uh, Butch told me that Kevin is using Harold Zekmans, who hasn't been a supervisor for <laughs> years and years, and there are no others in the garage. That's okay. probably the one that I saw then. So yeah, we yeah. should definitely very, okay. very strongly consider picking up a, a bunch. Okay. Uh, we obviously yeah. don't want to go nuts with it, but somewhere in the realm of like five to 10 would probably be prudent. Yeah. What do we have? Five guys on road crew? Is that right, Sue? Um, well, it depends if you count Tony and Dave. Um, it's Butch and Kevin and Leon and Frank. I'm getting seven, counting and myself and anybody and else. And yeah. you. Yeah. We get six. Who's the other one? Um, I had uh, Butch, Butch Kevin, Leon, Leon. Kevin, Frank, myself, um, Dave. On the road crew. Dave uh, and Tony. Dave and Tony. And uh, didn't we add John to the road crew too? Oh, Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. Sorry. And, Don, I and, 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 and technically John is part of the road crew too, John yeah. Selesky. Yeah. So I, I would say 10. We're going to need 10. Uh, it gives us like a, a very small bit of wiggle room, but 10, 10 should okay. fit the bill. And then I would say plus two more for myself and Jim, because yeah. God forbid there is, or I shouldn't say God forbid. We lost Irene there for a second. Mm. Show up for. Yeah, we lost you there for a second, but I think oh. we all know what you were saying. Yeah. And I agree. We may actually, just based on that, if we're at basically 12, 
Okay. Might not be a bad idea to get 15 just in case we have a situation where in the future, optimistically speaking, we have more people that are part of the road crew. Okay. We'll get quotes from, from rapid response and, and see what they have and just kind of go back with it. I promise I won't be too girly about it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, no, no neon pink. Safety yellow is a good way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 you know, actually I'm quite practical. It's uh, John, the one that has the flair for the flamboyant, but he's all about safety. So, yeah. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the office windows, the replacement of the office windows. We had gotten a quote from Mike's Remodeling and we're actually still waiting on the quotes from Troy Brubaker and Kissling Construction who were out and took measurements. Uh, Jim, you had kind of spearheaded the, the initial bit of that. Would you be willing to give Troy Brubaker and Kissling a call sometime this upcoming week and see if, where they're at with that? They came out and they did sure. the hard part. I, I, don't, I don't understand why they have not submitted yeah. a after they were out there and measured everything and asked two questions and still haven't, haven't submitted anything, I would suggest that if we don't hear something by next month, we're going to have to move forward with whatever we have because we're going to be into winter time and those windows need replaced before that. Yeah, and say so I'd have to check where the where that sits. I don't recall what the actual quote came in at at the top off the top of my head. If it's high enough that we have to have the three written quotes, we're going to have to find yeah. two other people to supply. Thirty two eighty. Yeah. It's 3280. Okay. Um, yeah, we may, we may have to just bite the bullet on that one. I do like to have two, if not three quotes, even when we're below the threshold, just right. for cost comparison, but you can lead a contractor to work, but you can't make them do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll keep, keep on that. But if you can give uh, Troy a gentle nudge and maybe somebody at Kissling a gentle nudge this week and, and get them to turn that in. I think that would be ideal because like I said, they, they've already done the hard part of actually coming out and measuring it. They just have to give us the, the written estimate of, of what it's going to be to do the job. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Board of Elections. Uh, we received notification from uh, that group that they have hired a firm that will be going around and ensuring that the polling sites are accessible for individuals with disabilities. Uh, this will be done sometime in August and we should be receiving advance notice of when they're gonna be coming on site. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Stonecroft Homeowners Association. Uh, we received a copy of a letter that they sent to Landmark Homes regarding the streetlights as well as a copy of a letter that they sent to the Marion Fire Company regarding fire suppression, specifically the two, or I think it was two, the, the failed dry hydrants. Um, with both of those letters, there's really kind of a minimal level of involvement that we can engage in as supervisors other than to be aware of it, uh, simply because the, the street light thing is largely, uh, unless I'm mistaken in this, both Andy and Jim McCarthy, uh, the street light thing is largely a kind of a legal definition issue between what, what furnished actually means when it comes to the streetlights, uh, in, installed and owned versus rented or leased. Um, as for the fire suppression, there's not a whole lot we can do short of uh, when they finally hit, I think at the end of phase four, Jim McCarthy, where they would have to, to close things out, but that specifies that they have to have uh, X number of things, the, the dry hydrants being one of them. Yeah. the. Uh... So the fire protection system as whole was blessed and approved by the fire chief. Uh, but out of that, there was a few things that had to be done that were deferred to phase four as far as adding floats on the pond and um, some work on the well pump. Then there was a couple other minor things that were part of that agreement. So, but that all has to be done prior to close out of phase four's escrow. Okay. So essentially the, the escrow item is dependent on that being a, a solid working functional system. Right. Uh, back in January, we'd actually done an escrow update where we looked at, because obviously things like that weren't in the escrow because it was previously built. So that's why we did that comparison of what was still outstanding versus what we were holding. And we were holding maybe 10,000 more than would take to cover the things on the list and the things that aren't on the original escrow list. So okay. in, in, case, in the, in the, Hopefully, unlikely a case that they don't move forward with them, that the township can move forward and get those done, and we'll have the money in escrow to do to do that. We'd all rather them just do them. Absolutely, than us. absolutely. It's it, ultimately it's got to get done one way or the other. The preference being to do it the the normal 
the, the normal yeah. way rather than us stepping in to do it. Definitely. So uh, unless we have anything further to add, guys, I, I think we're at kind of like a, a holding pattern here from the Board of Supervisors standpoint. There's not a lot that we can get involved on on either. Uh, not at this for, time. I was going to say for one reason or another, if for nothing else, timing. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jim or Irene, any questions? Oh, thank you. Okay. Next up is the Berks County uh, Public Works Association dues. Uh, we have been notified that our 2020 dues will be carried over through 2021. Uh, because of COVID-19 and social distancing rules, they have not been having meetings, which is why they're extending the, the membership essentially another year. Okay. Uh, next up is the Stouchburg Road flooding at Jeremy Troutman Poultry Operations driveway. Uh, we saw, we had an email that Sue forwarded over uh, with some photos from uh, Tom Schwalm of 1090 Stouchburg Road. McCarthy Engineering has been out to evaluate and determine that the driveway is constructed uh, per the approved plans, but does not allow rainwater runoff to flow into the existing streams. Uh, they have recommended that a swale be constructed along the driveway. Uh, Jim, is that something that we would be looking to the property owner to do or that we would be doing as a municipality? No, they would be doing that as part of their, that would be part of their land development um, and their escrow would get released till they had that done. When Sean actually spoke with our engineer, they were aware of it and they had come up with the same idea. Okay. And I guess their only question is <clears throat> along that right side of the driveway when you're exiting, it's actually over the property line, but there is an easement that they have from the neighbor to allow the driveway. So they were just looking for confirmation, I guess, from their attorney and the neighbor that that allowed them to regrade in there. And I said, well, if it allowed you to build the driveway in there, then the easement allows you to grade. So if you're grading to direct stormwater off the driveway, I think you're covered, but obviously you have to have your attorney consult you. So it, it sounded sound like they would already knew about it and were in process of doing that, of getting that work scheduled. So I don't, you, I don't expect would, we're going to have an issue out there. You, you would think that the easement was, or at least it should have been written broadly enough that you would have any, you know, maintenance responsibilities built in there and that you would right. be able to do that. You, so, you'd yeah. think and you'd hope, but it's, it's better safe than sorry. I'm just glad that uh, they're already moving on it. They're already trying yeah. to get it sorted. So that's good. If for some reason the neighbor would, 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 or they didn't have the rights to do it, then they would basically have to mill the first 50, 40 or 50 feet of the driveway out and, and kick it over to that right side. Um, that would also do it. And they, they said if, if they didn't allow them to put the swell in, then that's what they would do. Okay, good. Sounds like all the bases are covered then. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Next item on the agenda is property maintenance. Uh, we had some email correspondence going back and forth between uh, ourselves, uh, craft code, and uh, a concerned citizen. Um, there, there was a concern raised around the trailer park on Forge Road that craft codes got involved in. And uh, per the, the email that we got today, it sounds like the, the property owner, the actual property owner for that particular trailer park is taking direct involvement, that they're gonna be working with the, the leases or tenants uh, in that trailer park about uh, addressing a lot of the, the IPMC violations that are present there. So uh, thankfully it doesn't look like we had to have any, any heavy handed involvement other than to craft to go out and look at it and have a conversation with people, which uh, I, for the record is kind of my preferred way of handling this. It's the, the nice polite approach of, hey, this is something that, that we need to address. Here's why. And then people just kind of, you know, saying, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's take care of this. So we'll keep, continue to keep an eye on that and continue to keep in touch with craft. But uh, at this point, I think we're more well on the, the path forward of, of progress on that one. Okay. Next item is the pension plan audits. Uh, we have been notified that the department of the auditor general uh, we'll be looking at our pension plan uh, for the years 2016 through 2019. Uh, they do the audits regularly every three years. Um, and uh, we have begun the, the act of corresponding via email back and forth around what's needed and when we need to have it to them. So we'll continue working on that. Irene, I'm sure you and I will be in touch. And Sue, uh, you'll be invaluable for this because you've been kind of the, the <laughs> constant point in the universe throughout all, all of those things with the pension plan. Um, so uh, one way or the other, we'll, we'll get it done, but it's in uh, the early stages that we're still doing kind of discovery on a lot of the things that they want to look at. 
Okay, and the last item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, I have sent over the, the points that we had discussed at prior meetings to Jim, uh, and I actually had a phone conversation earlier today with Jim around some of those points and some of the, the, the strategy of making the proposal for the revisions. Our next step is to, to take what I threw together via our brainstorming and uh, presented to Jim and work with Jim on getting it into a, an acceptable memo format to go over to the DEP and then seeing where the conversation takes us from there. Uh, we're still sticking with the premise that if we can, if we can say that we need it and we can afford it, we'll do it. Otherwise, we have, to, we have to be built into the plan that if we need it and can't afford it, we have to manage a best technical guidance. And if we don't need it, then we don't even discuss affordability if we can prove that that's actually the case. Um, the, the whole, the big picture on this is to do exactly what the Act 537 intends, which is to manage the waste of the township long term, not short term, something that would fit the bill, unless we have to revise at any point in the future again for the next 20, 30, 40 years, this should cover it. Any question, guys? No, thank you very much, Peter, for spearheading that and being the voice of reason on that issue. I appreciate it so much. Well, thank you, Irene. Thank you. Okay. At that point, Jim McCarthy, I'll, I'll be in contact with you whenever our schedules align mutually on that. But uh, I, I think it should be a, a relatively straightforward thing based on the conversation we had earlier today to get a, like a one-page thing together. The next step yeah. would be, like you said, that they don't use Zoom. They use Skype, trying to get something lined up for doing a <laughs> Skype meeting between the, the group of us to discuss. Right. Maybe we get that memo together to send it out to Tim Wagner or, and, uh, and Jana, Will, Jana Williams and request the, then request the Skype meeting so that they have legal and technical mm -hmm. and all in one meeting. Yeah. I'll be back in. I'm away next week. I'm, I'm back in on the 10th. and Then I'm, then I'm chained to my COVID desk for the rest of the year. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no worries. I, I think... I, I don't think we're going to have anything together by next week. So no, you're, if, you're, so. I was gonna say, if you're on vacation, enjoy your vacation. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't dwell on that while you're, you're off uh, fishing or whatever you're doing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I, was say, I know you, I know you're a fisherman. Um, okay. So that concludes all of the regular agenda items. Uh, Sue, I apologize. I, I did not see the, the police report in the packet of stuff. Well, I added it on cause I wasn't sure if it was going to, <laughs> fit on so maybe i sent you the wrong one but oh, it's anyway. okay it's okay do you do you happen to it have it in the front very, of you very very last it was it should have been the very very last item okay uh I, I can i can circle back to that and see if i can find it in my email i didn't see it prior to the meeting do you um, want me to read it yeah sure yeah if you have it in front of you you want me to read everything off no just general synopsis like for example the the road the traffic stops how many of those did we have I don't know. Let me find it. Traffic stops four. Okay, so that's about normal for the month. Do we have any citations? Citations issued six. Six citations, four stops. Interesting. Um, yeah. Did we have any uh, resp emergency responses or like calls for traffic, help? Traffic accidents three. Okay, that's a little higher than normal. DUI arrests one. Oh, yeah. that's that's abnormal. Yeah. Um, misdemeanor felony two. That's definitely abnormal. It looks like the, yeah. uh, the Tulpa Hawken police had a busy month last month. EMS fire advisors, 10. That's, I think that's about right. I think they're usually between like yeah, six that's and eight. pretty much it. Okay. Okay. Once I, I find that, that'll be one of the things that I upload to the public Google Drive, uh, along with a number of other things. Um, while I'm thinking of it, uh, Jim, the stop signs uh, that I was l looking at on, on Main Street, what's right. the without dwelling too much on it, what's the, the general form and fit for, for a four-way stop? There has to be, um, there's, there's a bunch of warrants you have to meet with PennDOT. And, you know, typically, typically unless there's a sight distance issue or a high accident issue or a lot of lefts being made out of the legs that currently don't have the stop signs onto the others, you really won't meet the warrants. I had asked TPD to get us a quote so we would know, but unfortunately they didn't have that done today. I had actually sent them a reminder and they said they, they said it was kind of short notice, but they were trying and they didn't get it done. So I imagine we'll see that in the next couple of weeks okay. or next week or this week. So, well, probably next week at this point. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was, I was curious cause I, I don't, I don't know all the, the intricacies that goes into that, but it really just kind of seems like that intersection 
like it just feels like it should be a four-way stop based on the kind of traffic that we get through there. Um, there are a number of other things that we can entertain doing. Like uh, there was an email that we were circulating around crosswalks, the requirements for crosswalks, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Uh, even things like a, a bike lane on the outside edge of the, the parked cars could help to, to narrow, visually narrow the road so people are less inclined to, to go speeding through town. Right. Um, all of those things are, are good things. We actually, in, in reality, may end up doing a, a mix of them. I was just curious yeah. where stop signs fit into the equation and how feasible it was. Yeah, what happens with stop sign is it says right in the traffic control manual, like the first line under stop signs is stop signs are not to be used as speed control devices. It's like literally sentence one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you all over the uses. And let me drive through any of the boroughs. There's a stop sign on every corner. You don't need them at every corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but they've all been there so long. It was before you had to meet a warrant analysis. And I guess, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong. If since it's not a pen dot road, you 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 could even if you don't meet the warrant analysis, still put the stop signs in. But I guess then the question is, can you legally enforce them? That's right. That's, That's really what comes to ask. If you if you if you get somebody with a sharp attorney that comes in and says, well, wait a minute, you should have had a four way stop sign there. Let me see your study that the pen dot warrants are met you don't really have the recourse to go back on it and enforce it. So, you know, that's something I'd have, Andy would have to advise you on. If, if we went through the exercise and had like traffic planning design, do that analysis and they come back and say, we don't meet the warrants, whether the supervisors want to go forward with it anyway. I mean, there's not, there wouldn't be anything illegal about you doing it, but it, I think it's just an enforceability yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. I think whether it's like, we obviously don't want to do anything illegal. That's kind of a given, but um, we also don't want to do anything that would potentially pose problems later for either for us as a board or anybody else that would be on the board in the future. Um, okay. Like I said, just from driving that way periodically and just seeing some of the, the traffic flow, and it, it's very reminiscent of, I, I grew up in the, in the city where stop signs are like a thing on just about every corner. It's, it, right. it's just, it, it kind of smacks of that particular feel of an intersection. Um, but and, and you know, crap, you know, I haven't like, dri I haven't driven it since you sent it out. So, you know, maybe th there could be a thing where, you know, PennDOT has the required sight distances. There could be a thing where maybe a building sticks out or a porch sticks out and we don't have it. Or mm -hmm. potentially even, um, we had this out in Bethel, Lebanon, and we did a study. We didn't think it would meet it, but because where the vehicle cars were allowed to park, they were actually encroaching in the sight triangle. So because of that, looking to the left for the car making the left, they met that warrant that allowed them to put a four-way stop in. So I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's, you know, it, per, a sight distance issue is really high waiting on a warrant for a stop sign. Yeah, and that, that actually might be something, because I know, for example, we've actually been putting no parking here to corner signs to support Title 75 uh, regulations, right. um, simply because on Main Street there, whether it's uh, at Church or Sharp or Water, <laughs> visibility is very poor when you're trying to turn. So even oh, yeah. with that, that 20 feet from the corner, if there's cars parked there, it is still very, very difficult to see if there's oncoming traffic when you're making a right from any one of those. Right. So, you, so you know, that, that may be a warrant. You know, we may get that left-looking warrant for pulling out, even though we don't meet all the accident and the number of turns, and, and you, may, you may get it on that. You only have to meet a, a warrant, correct, Jim, uh, for, for one of those. For one I think he has to meet three of the 14. Oh, you have to meet three of, oh, three of the 14 to, warrants. I believe you have to meet three of the 14 to get the warrant. But for a four-way stop, you don't have to meet them for each, for each direction. No, no, you do not. If you need, if you need, you wouldn't, you would never want a three-way stop intersection unless there's some crazy configuration. So if one of those two legs that doesn't have a stop now meets it, by default, the other leg would then meet meet it as well yeah okay well in that case i, I look forward to, to seeing what what we uh, get together on that because i think that based on what we just said now that might actually still be a relatively real possibility yeah yeah i was i was hoping they'd have it to you so we could know the dollar figures we were talking about tonight so that the board could you know at least have something to mull over but hopefully yeah. we'll have it shortly and you can email around so that for next month you have you have it well in advance yeah, uh, believe me, there's plenty of other things that we can we can mull over, like the the crosswalks and things like that, while we're waiting. Okay. Normal shifts. What was that, Irene? 
Rumble strips. Rumble, rumble strips. Oh, at that point, would you like to would you like to talk about rumble strips? Or make a, a segue into the uh, Irene supervisor comments. <laughs> well, rumble rumble strips and and traffic calming humps. That's what they call them now. Where you get the the table with the long slope up is flat. They work really well. Your plowing guys absolutely despise them. <laughs> Yeah. Because that's, that's, especially that's the I'm rumble talking. strips, at least the hump they can see. When those guys are zipping along at 40 miles an hour in a plow and they hit a rumble strip, they know they hit the rumble strip. That's one of the reasons yeah. I yeah. had them for a year and then got rid of them. Qu yeah. As quickly as they came in, they got rid of them. <laughs> yeah, the rumble strips are the rumble strips are rough. But coming they, into, uh, forgive me because I'm terrible. Yeah. When you're coming into onto Main Street off of 422. That's horrible. There's there's very little signage to indicate that there's a, a speed change. There's like one sign, I think this says 35, and then the next thing you know, you're on top of the sign that says 25. And so you're coming in at least at 40, 45 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden, boom, you 60. know. 60. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I, I'd like to know what you'd recommend on that particular section. Well, then what you want to do there is you, in a, you have your speed limit sign, so I, I'm assuming they're spaced correctly, but you want to put you want to put reduced speed ahead signs, about in front of the when they're getting off 422. You want to put that reduced speed ahead caution sign in the yellow, and then after the 35. So that once they've seen that, you want another reduced speed ahead um, uh, sign in there to kind of it gets people's attention. The warning the warning signs aren't enforceable; they're just that they're they're just to give the driver um, the heads up of what's coming ahead. You know, like the speed limit curve things where it says 25 miles an hour through this curve. You can't get a ticket for doing 40. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a cautionary sign. But it, it does get people's attention, especially coming yeah. off a highway like that. Yeah. So, Irene, I can and I, I, I compel you and Jim to both do the same. Let's drive that and see kind of where we think the spacing would be sure. right. And uh, we can reach out to MSI and see how much <laughs> a, a couple of uh, reduced speed ahead like yellow caution signs would be. Sure. No yeah, you probably for the for the breakaway post and the sign and all, we use like one hundred and sixty five dollars as the budget to, to buy them and install them. So that's you know if we're installing them ourselves. You know the sign and the breakaway post are probably around one hundred and five bucks. Okay, because I know we've uh, we've actually we've got a number of the posts and sign uh, the breakaway bits. Right. Um, and the past couple like the no parking signs that we got were were not outlandishly expensive. So I think this is yeah. something that we we could do relatively cheaply and easily. Yeah, the sign's usually the cheapest part. The breakaway post costs more than the sign. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is the truth. Okay, anything else, Irene? Uh, do you want to touch maybe on the, the car show? Yeah, we had talks about this during the workshop, and we don't think it's a good idea. We wouldn't be able to restrict the amount of people coming in. Um, it's just too much of a risk with COVID-19 right now. I just don't think it's a great idea to have that many people potentially show up and I think you phrased it be it be a COVID-19 petri dish yeah yeah specifically it's it's a it's a wonderful activity it was a great yeah. great thing and I look forward to the next one but I think right now even if we had half the people show up that we had at the last one it would be near impossible to enforce the kind of uh, social distancing and safety parameters that we need to make sure people aren't potentially getting very ill or, or worse uh, from that event um, and things can change at any I'm moment. Sorry, I mean, it's probably a wise decision based on insurance coverage because a lot of insurance policies, in fact, almost all of them will have clauses that say if you engage in any activity that would violate any rule, law, or regulation, that you run the risk of losing that coverage. So mm -hmm. that's that's a real concern and. I mean, even if the regulations are what they are now, if there's 250 people max, and there's the argument that, you know, the governor's order isn't law, but I don't think that we should be willing to test that. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, aside from the insurance figures, I, I don't think, I don't think a little bit of fun is worth putting people yeah. at, at risk for, for illness or death is the, the bottom line of it. So it's, it's unfortunate. It's a, like I said, a great event. I look forward to the next one, but we should probably essentially post, uh, not postpone the 2021 but call 2020's car show off and then just start planning for 2021 and make it as, as big and, and best as it can be 
So, Irene, anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Jim Brooks, do you have any comments? Uh, I have a question. On the no parking here to corner signs, is it mandated how far those have to be? I know you just said 20 feet. Yes, so there, it's technically 20 feet from a crosswalk. So uh, what we did is we measured where the, the corner is. Um, and uh, bear with me for just a moment. I apologize. I've got a, a rogue, rogue child. Um, <laughs> Kids of Houdini got out of his little playpen. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Um, we measured from where the where the crosswalks would would be on on corners. Uh, some of the corners over by Stonecroft actually had, like the the handicap ramps where you would have a crosswalk, and they're all twenty feet from from the corner, effectively from that that line there. Okay. Thank you. Likewise, if anybody that is uh, in attendance, supervisor or otherwise. Uh, has suggestions. It's actually a Title 75. It's in the vehicle code. It's technically illegal to park within 20 feet of a corner. Um, if you see people doing it and you think it would be a good candidate for having a sign place there, reach out to us, let us know. We'll look at it. And if it's uh, a good fit, we're happy to put a sign in there if that supports uh, safety, especially if it's a, a visibility concern like we had over at Stonecroft and uh, along Main Street. Correct. Okay. Anything else, Jim? No, sir. Okay, Sue. Nothing. Okay, Andy. Um, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot. I forgot them. That's okay. So, Andy, uh, any comment? Yeah, I, I was just going to tell you. Don't don't feel bad. My eighteen year old uh, daughter came in uh, earlier to borrow my phone charger. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I I thought I locked the door, but apparently I didn't. So my uh, my one year old daughter just pushed it open. And was like, here I am. Uh, what happens in age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. So Stu, I guess we're we're going to continue to do these ordinances COVID style. So the supervisors will come in at their convenience and sign the ordinance, and then you'll get it to me. Correct. Right. Just you want two copies, right? Yep. That sounds good. Yep. I will get it to you. All right. Um, I can do it. What's that? I can... I'm, I'm, I'm the drop-off person. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you yeah. for doing that. Appreciate it. It worked. Um, yeah, yeah. The only thing that I had to, to just mention is the, the Joint um, Planning Commission meeting. Yes. Because our, our zoning uh, ordinance uh, amendment, which is to join the, the joint zoning ordinance, has been, as you know, a work in progress and it's taking a long time. I mean, most zoning amendments take take some time, especially a comprehensive one like this, but I made a couple requests, one to Lisa Heilman to get a meeting scheduled and I made a second request to David Randler, who's the, the chairman. Um, this was, I made that request last month and I haven't seen one yet, but I know that North Heidelberg has an amended uh, an amendment to the ordinance in, in the works. I think it relates to the ski slope and um, over 55 mm. housing up there. But I'll make that request again to see if we can get it kick started. That's all I can say. We'll okay. make a, another request. As before, if they need a hand, if they don't have the stuff in place to be able to do kind of what we're doing with the Zoom meeting, please let them know. I'm I'm happy to help facilitate that. They can even use our our Zoom account, I'll set up the meeting room and everything like that to make sure that we can, can keep this moving along. Very good. Yep. We'll do. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Jim McCarthy, anything on, on your end for engineering? Uh, the only thing I wouldn't cover is I was at a conservation district for a budget meeting and they have money for low volume dirt and gravel roads for 2021. And they're going to start taking applications on January 1, which we already have our application ready. So we just have to send it. We'll just have to remember at some point to authorize sending it in on January 1. I mean, so out of curiosity, since we already have that prepped and ready to go and we know we're going to do it January 1st, uh, do we want to just authorize you to do it now and just be done with it? You can set a calendar reminder on your, like your email or something and just pop it in there yeah, on that, Jan 1. We can definitely do that. 
Okay. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head which one that was because we had like three that we were looking at. And we I don't know. Marion, does, we put the culvert on Marion Drive back in. Okay. That was the one we submitted. Okay. So, but which Marion Drive one? Near the one um, where the the one where the stream used to be an S and is now straight. Okay. Yeah. That is near Jake Wise. <laughs> yep. Jake Wise. Yeah. Jake Wise is a point. Okay. So uh, I'll make a motion to uh, authorize McCarthy Engineering to submit the Marion Drive culvert project to uh, Berks County Conservation as soon as they begin taking ap uh, applications. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. That was all I had. Okay, fantastic. I'm glad that uh, that's that's another thing that we can just kind of have quietly working along in the background and we will potentially forget about. Yep. No, I wasn't going to let you forget about it. I know you want to get that grant money to do oh, that. Oh, yes, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seeing as there are no other comments or agenda items, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The net time is now 7.52 p.m. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Hi. All right. Okay. Thank Meeting you. Adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice seeing Back everyone who had a, the camera on. And uh, take care and stay safe. You, you too. too. You, you too. too. Right. Take care.